Okay, so lead code practice time. Um, so in this video, there are two goals. The first one is to see how to solve this problem. And the second one is to see how to solve this problem properly in the interview. So, okay, and the uh, interview. So remember the first thing in the interview is to always try to understand the problem. If there is anything unclear, please bring the questions to the interviewer to ask the interviewer to clarify. And also at the same time, think about some edge cases. And uh, let's read this problem. So valid number can be split into these components in order, a decimal number or an integer. So optional an E or E followed by an integer. So a decimal number can be split into these components. A sign character, one of the following formats, at least one digit, followed by at least one digit followed by a dot. Uh, at least one digit followed by a dot followed by at least one digit. A dot followed by at least one digit, okay. An integer can be split up into these components, a sign character at least one digit. Uh, okay. Okay, so a valid number can be either a decimal number or an integer. And the, the definition uh, of decimal and integer are listed as something like this, okay? So some examples, let's see, those are all valid numbers. Those are not valid numbers because this contains like some invalid characters for numbers. This one, it doesn't have the number itself actually. This one, okay, so E should be followed by an integer. All right, so on and so forth. Um, so I think, we are pretty much understand. We I, I pretty much get the quest what the question is. So if so, given a string, return true if s is a valid number. Okay, something like this. All right. So let's read the constraints. So for sure that the string is not going to be empty between one to twenty, and uh, consists only English letters, both uppercase and lowercase, digits and the plus or minus. All right, so yeah, I think I, I kind, I pretty much understand what the problem is. So I think there are a lot of edge cases at this moment to think about. Um, yeah, because there are a lot of conditions to constraints to define what the number, what the valid number is. But uh, I would say if this question is asked, um, it's pretty much just testing your coding ability instead of because there are not not much room to find the solution, like finding the algorithm like that. But briefly, I would say, um, it seems like there are several different things. So first one is a dot, and the second one is the E. And also, if E exists, uh, we should m make sure that after E, there is an integer there. All right, so, and uh, we need to make sure that if dot exists, it should come before E and, uh, um, and uh, yeah, it should come before E. Um, okay, except that, I think we should be good. So like I said, um, I would like to define different thing. So for, so let's see the number, so let's say, if I have one one point two two and then the e, let's say this is plus e uh, minus three, so something like this. I would decompose the number into several different parts. So the dot, the e, and uh, the the number that comes before e and the number that comes after e. So that's the four parts we need to think about. So I would say let's say first we define the dots. Um, if we have in we have a dot within the number, and the, the other one I would define the e. If we have e in this number, and the and these, and then we would I would define the first part of the number, which is the uh, one one sorry, 
plus 11.22. So this one I would say is the first part. And the next one I would define the second part. So the characters, so the character won't contain uh, space. Okay, that's good. Um, all right, so if I would say if um, I start car, uh, I would first define the idx is equal to zero, starting from it. If s dot car at zero is equal to a plus, or uh, s dot car at uh, hmm, zero is equal to a one, sorry, uh, is equal to a minus. What I was thinking, so <laughs> I would uh, just a plus plus idx, and then uh, well. Um, idx is smaller than s dot lens. Uh, first, I would get c car c is equal to s dot car at uh, uh, idx. All right. So, what if? So if c is equal to a plus. Or C is equal to a uh, minus, then I would expect that it comes after a E uh, at this moment. So I would say if um, S dot car at uh, IDX minus one is not equal to E. Uh, it's not let's say it's not equal to e so let's say s car is not equal to e and s dot car at uh, idx minus one is not equal to the capital e so if those are not this is not e the previous character is not e then we just need to return false here Okay, else if um, it is a dot, if C is a dot, then if we have already have dot or we have already have E, then we need to return false. Otherwise, I think we should be good and then we have we need to make sure that we have set dot as true and then else if c is equal to e or c is equal to capital e then if um, e already exists then we need to return a false for it uh, if e already exists or if we don't have the first part of the character uh, sorry the first part of the number like we don't have this something like this part with before the e then we need to return false otherwise we have the e as uh, true okay uh yeah so that's uh that's pretty much it <laughs> And uh, else, if um, else, if uh, it's a uh, it's a uh, digit, so if character dot is digit uh, C, if it's a digit, then I would say um, if E. Then we have second part as true. Uh, otherwise, we have the first part as true. Okay, and else, if it's something other than those character set, for sure it's going to be a uh, invalid thing. We are going to return false here. And up, uh, and we need to plus plus index here. And uh, out of, outside of this while loop, what we do is we can, we need to just return, um, 
So first of all, we need to make sure that uh, the first part exists. So it should be like the first part exist and either second part so either if it is not e and uh, not uh, second part that's perfectly fine or if it is e and it is a second part then that's the thing then that's also okay yeah, so I think that's pretty much it. Uh, let's randomly pick up some number to, to check. So, okay, so after the coding, it's time for you to do some testing. So I think in, if this one is asked, you will need to go through a couple different test cases manually to explain how this piece of it is gonna work and what it is going to return. So for example, um, if it is Let's take the example, minus 0 0.1. So first of all, it is minus V plus plus IDX. IDX is equal to one now. And uh, the next character is zero, so it falls into this branch. It's not E, so we set second part as true, and then we encounter dots. We see that dot haven't been set. Then we are going to set dot as true now. We encounter another, uh, another another digit then um, not too much to be done um, we just said set first part as true as well and finally we, first part is true and e and second part not set so this one is you're going to return true let's see abc for sure it's going to fall this part so it, it's going to return false for sure let's see for 1e so first of all it is a one first the second we said the first part as true and then the next character it is e we said true as e, e as true and we see that first part is true but it's like e exists but the second part doesn't exist uh so if e ex but the second part doesn't exist then this part is going to be uh this part is going to be false so yeah so overall i think it's good um let's give it a shot all right so it's accepted so that's it for this uh, coding question um yeah i think not too much to think about solution but mostly about coding and and just edge case checkings um so a lot of edge case to think about yeah, so that's it for this uh, coding question. If you have any question about this puzzle or about the solution, please leave some comments. If you feel this video helpful, please help subscribe to this channel and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.